Repeat after me. Everything I know about diving is wrong. Okay, not everything, but man, did we swallow some whoppers back in the day. And today we're busting seven dive myths so hard that even Jacques Cousteau would face part. And because I love you all, we've got actual science to back these up. Let's go. Myth number one, showering after diving can't cause the bends. As odd as it might seem, jumping into a hot shower immediately after diving can trigger DCS. It's all to do with vasodilation, which can cause your capillary blood vessels to open wide and thus release excess nitrogen into your body faster than it might normally do so. Hot showers alone won't do it, but if you're already on the edge, you're dehydrated, you've missed safety stops, and you've gone beyond your diving limits, you could, could tip the scales. Far better to wait 30 minutes as your shower isn't fleeing anywhere. The risk is considered low. If you're diving within recreational limits, it's considered as low as 0.004%. So that's about one in every 10,000 dives, roughly. Now that's not an excuse to miss the apres dive shower when you're on a week's liverboard, as the other guests might complain. Just take about 30 minutes before you hit the head. The science behind it is that a combination of dehydration, increased vasodilation, and supersaturation of nitrogen are all factors which could get you a hit, particularly if you warmed up too fast, even if those risks are tiny. Myth number two, a beer will help you off-gas nitrogen. Oh, this one is deliciously wrong. Like a hot shower, alcohol vasodilates your blood vessels. Now this sounds like it might be helpful, except alcohol also dehydrates you and slows down circulation. The net result, slower nitrogen elimination. But as with the shower scene, an increased risk of a DCS hit. A 2003 study by Dushik et al. in Aviation, Space and Environmental Medicine proved it. Drinkers had higher bubble grades post-dive. So no, beer isn't a liquid deco. It's more like liquid regret if you're already bubble prone. Myth number three, you must wait 24 hours to fly. The 24-hour rule was introduced by the FAA and was for commercial and professional divers, not recreational. Dan released an update to its guidance in 2017, dropping the no-fly recommendation for single no-stop dives to 12 hours and multiple dives to 18 hours. This, of course, assumes that you're otherwise healthy and well. As a pro tip, your dive computer's fly mode is far smarter than the 24-hour rule. Use it. Myth number four, this one's a doozy. Nitrox makes you feel less tired. Nitrox does reduce nitrogen loading, but fatigue is caused by a combination of exertion, dehydration, and CO2 buildup, as well as N2. Okay, here's the spicy take. Nitrox might make you feel better but for not for the reason you think. When diving air, we often push closer to our no decompression limits, especially on repetitive dives, particularly when we're on liverboards. That means more nitrogen, more micro bubbles, and yes, possibly subclinical DCS, tiny, undiagnosable hits that leave you wiped out. Studies, including the ones in diving and hyperbaric medicine in 2016 on gas embolisms, and the 2005 study on fatigue correlation, show even asymptomatic divers have micro bubbles post dive, thanks to Doppler ultrasound. And guess what? Nitrox divers typically dive shallower and take more conservative profiles. Perhaps they're more conscious of their MOD. So, is it the gas, or is it that just that I'm not punishing my body as much? The study for me is the 2018 study, in, again, in diving and hyperbaric medicine, 
which showed that there was no physiological difference in fatigue between air and nitrox blends. But why? Typical nitrox users plan better. They hydrate more and they dive more conservatively. They're typically a little bit more experienced too. And that is why it's often referred to as the placebo effect. So the kicker, nitrox doesn't give you energy, but if it makes you think you're Superman, hey, if it works, dive on. Myth number five, sharks are out to get you. I hate to say this, sharks, they don't want you. Not at all. Most attacks are mistaken identity. At the end of the day, a surfer looks a lot like a seal. A 2021 study by the Florida Museum showed that sharks actively avoid humans in more than 95% of all encounters. We're too bony and we taste weird. You are, however, 47 times more likely to be struck by lightning than by bitten by a shark. So maybe we need to be worried more about the weather than jaws. Still, if you see me flailing away from a two-foot reef shark, no, you won't. Myth number six, you must do a safety stop on every dive. Safety stops are a little like flossing. They're great in theory, but let's be honest, we don't always do them. And guess what? For most recreational dives, they're not mandatory. And here's why. Safety stops help reduce micro bubbles in your blood, but studies like Dan's 2016 analysis show that while they can reduce bubble formation by as much as 50%, they're only critical after deep dives or repetitive dives. And for Dan's analysis, deep is greater than 18 meters or 60 feet. Your body off gases naturally during ascent. A safety stop just gives you extra time before ascending. But if you're going shallow enough, say 10, 12 meters, 30 to 40 feet, with plenty of surface interval, missing it won't do you any harm though your dive computer might judge you. That said, if you can do a safety stop, do it. Think of safety stops like seatbelts. You might not need them every time, but why risk it? Myth number seven, you can't dive after flying. Newsflash, flying before diving is fine. It's flying after that's the issue. The myth claims the cabin pressure will preload you with nitrogen, but planes only simulate 2,400 meters of altitude or about 8,600 feet, which is about 0.75 of an atmosphere. A 2019 study in the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medicine Journal confirmed it's negligible for single dives. So yes, you can dive right after landing, but maybe skip the 3 a.m. red eye if you want to remember your fins. Okay, I know, you know, humming the Jaws theme will not summon sharks. We both know that. My brain doesn't know. I still sit there. <laughs> Tell me, what's your irrational dive belief? Comment down in the section below. Let's all have a laugh at ourselves. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed this. Splash down on subscribe. Any comments in the section below. We all know the drill. Thanks very much, guys. Stay diving.